Welcome back, Irish fans, to Breaking Down Braves Boys podcast. I'm um, back. Mostly just been focusing on articles, but now that the season's about to start, less than two weeks, I'm pretty sure. Actually, probably a little over two weeks. Uh, I'm going to try to get the podcast going. We're going to be back with game previews for every game. We're going to try to talk to writers from other teams about their team uh, to really get the best game previews in the Notre Dame community for basketball. So. Really looking forward to that. Be on the lookout when the season starts. Uh, give us a subscribe on YouTube so you don't miss it. Um, and I'll be back with Jake and everybody else soon. And we'll be talking Notre Dame basketball a couple nights a week probably. So really looking forward to that. We'll also have a season preview coming. But today it's just me going to be releasing this – or talking about the schedule that was just released um, yesterday, probably two days ago when you guys are seeing this, but um, obviously the toughest schedule they've had in a really long time. I guess I'll go over the first games for the rest of 2020, go over the games. So to start, Michigan State, Saturday or Sunday, November 28th. I think it's a Sunday. That's going to be tough. Hardest opener they've had outside of probably UNC last year. Uh, then Western Michigan, Tennessee, two days after Western Michigan, four days after Tennessee, Ohio State, four days after them, Kentucky, four days after that, Duke, that's brutal. Purdue, Syracuse, Virginia to round out 2020. So that's going to be a really tough nine-game stretch. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, there's eight. And then nine is Pitt. But it's going to be really tough to start. You have to beat Western Michigan to – do anything and I think you really have to beat one or two ranked teams you can't start out the season one and eight one and seven and expect to have a great year it's possible based on their schedule in the later half of the year which I'll get into but I think you have to pull off a game against one of these ranked teams whether it's like Michigan State who I think I don't think is quite ranked but they're really close Tennessee Ohio State those are two teams you can beat that are big resume wins. I know Bray wasn't talking about resume, but it's absolutely relevant with this kind of schedule. If you get one of these big wins, it's going to look good on your resume. That's just how it goes. Duke, that's going to be tough. Purdue, Syracuse, Virginia, you have to get some of those games if you really want to, if you really want to have a shot at the tournament, especially just being in the ACC in general, you have to win some of these non-conference games. So that's kind of my thought on the first nine. Uh, I know everybody and their mother is given a take on this. So that's not really what I'm here for. We all know that it's going to be a tough schedule. Um, I'm just going to go over it. I'm not going over every game because we'll probably do that during the season. And I can probably give you a better estimate of what I think is going to happen then. So not going to do that yet. But let's go into January. Um, I think this hot take, December is tough. Uh, late November is tough, but I think January and early February are going to be the most important months of the entire season. If they can win one or two games, maybe three in January or in December, that sets them up really well for January. And this isn't going to be a year like last year where if you beat all the teams you're supposed to beat, you get in, which they couldn't do. But if let's say they beat Wake Forest, beat Boston College, sweep Syracuse, and then that's three extra wins right there, they're probably in the tournament. And if they get one off of Florida State, they're in the tournament. So um, it's not going to be like that this year. You're going to have to win tough games. But looking at January, those are some of your most winnable games on the entire schedule. You look at Pittsburgh to start, then Georgia Tech, who we swept last year. Not sure I'm totally buying the hype with Georgia Tech, but they're supposed to be a good team. That's going to be a good win if you can pull one off against them. Virginia Tech, that's another super winnable game. So three to start the month, all extremely winnable. Virginia, you can probably afford to lose that game if you win one or two in December against ranked teams. Boston College, absolutely have to win that game. Howard must win. You just have to get those uh, just to boost your total wins and your ACC record. Miami's going to be tough. They have one of the best teams in the entire ACC. So you got to take some of the pressure off of yourself early on so that you're not in a position where you have to beat Miami. Virginia Tech, another winnable game, like very winnable. Have to win that game. 
North Carolina, like I said earlier, you're going to have to get one or two off of these ranked teams. It was tough for them to do it last year, so I don't know how much faith I have they can beat UNC. But I'm not, I don't know. I don't think UNC's maybe going to be where they were in past years. They're going to be a good team, but then they're not going to be as bad as last year, obviously. I just don't know if I'm buying a top three or four finish in the ACC from them. And then February, like I touched on, early February is going to be huge also, especially looking at the late February schedule. Start out Wake Forest. That should be an automatic win. Wake Forest probably going to finish last in the ACC. Georgia Tech, you at least have to split with them. Duke, uh, that's going to be tough. You saw what happened last year with no cash to Stanley, and this Duke team is better than it was last year. Miami is going to be tough. Clemson almost beat us without Amir Sims, and – now he's going to be back, so that's not great. And uh, he was talking trash with people on Instagram, Notre Dame fans, a couple of days ago. So we'll see about that. Louisville, I mean, that's going to be a tough game. And then Boston College, you have to win that game also. And then to end it off, March, NC State and Florida State, those are going to be two tough games. I think you're going to have to get those. Um or maybe they're not in a position where they have to get those. That's the best case scenario. Um, but overall, I think it's very manageable to get in the tournament. They haven't beat a top 25 team in like two or three years. So they're definitely going to have to do that. Let's see. There's like, there's like 10 top 25 games on their schedule. So you can't, you can't lose all those. You have to win one or two. But realistically, to get in the tournament, I think you have to get one of those first eight or nine games, like Michigan State, Tennessee, Ohio State, Kentucky, Duke maybe, Syracuse, Purdue. You have to win one of those games, two or three probably. So then you set yourself up for later in the year. You have to beat teams in January, like Pitt, Georgia Tech, Virginia Tech, Boston College, Howard. Um, You can't be dropping games like you did early in the year last year. If you remember um, the Boston College game when they lost 73-72, first time they've ever lost to Boston College at home under Bray, you can't have those games this year. Um, I mean, they're going to have to – I don't know why I keep saying this, but you're going to have to beat good teams. That's, that's what you get from the schedule this year. Maybe next year it will be less difficult, but – I think it's going to stay the same for the rest of this course, like career, Hub, Goodwin, Nate, Cormac, like that. Um, we'll go into if we think they can do it on that season preview show in about a week. So definitely tune into that if you're going to, um, if you're interested. Um, but yeah, I think, so let's go over what I think they have to do. So two or three of those first nine. In January, you can probably only afford a loss to Virginia in UNC, in Miami, maybe. So you probably have to win all but two or three of those games. February, you have to be – you have to win the first two games of that month, Wake and Georgia Tech. You probably got to split with Miami on the season. You got to sweep Boston College, sweep Wake Forest, sweep Georgia Tech. Um, I don't think you necessarily have to split with Duke. Split with Florida State. Play them twice, right? There's a, I think they play them twice. Sorry, I'm new to the schedule. I don't think they play them twice, actually. So you probably got to be Florida State. NC State, you got to win that game. Just the theme that I'm going to keep repeating for the next couple months, you have to win the games you're supposed to win if you want any shot at the tournament. And you have to win as an underdog one or two times. Put yourself in a good spot. You don't want to put yourself in a spot like last year. Late in the year where you have to beat, there's a four-game stretch, and they had to win like all four of those games against Clemson, Duke, UNC, just to stay alive, and they couldn't do that. And then late in the year, they had another shot um, against Florida State, and they couldn't pull it off. But – this year, I think the win total probably going to be lower than last year. But in my opinion, the team is better this year. Uh, that's all I'm going to say about predictions for now before that uh, season preview show. But that's all I got to say. 
thank you guys for watching. Tune into our show in about a week or two when we preview the season, and then we're going to start previewing every game, probably making more than just that too. So thank you guys for watching. Go Irish and peace.